The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. Once more, do we go into the breach, dear friends? The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Oh, so what do we have going on today? Well, the market's kind of hanging in there. Uh, 2881 on the S&P. Cash, the uh, Dow 30 uh, up 74, the NASDAQ up 36, the Russell up 2,000. Volume is uh, just okay, 4.3 billion shares. Um, dollar index is off of about 32 cents, 96.60 on the uh, June 19th contract. When we go back to commodities and look at gold, eh, basically flat down 20 cents. Crude off about 40 cents. And the market just kind of looks, again, rather tired, although not uh, horribly. Um, I talked about a trade that we had over the last week, and I said I'd talk more about it um, when we concluded it. Um, I sold it around a little bit before one, and that was the IYT. We'll look at the chart on it. Uh, but uh, I suspect that this is kind of the end of fund buying and why I'm not ready to pull the ripcord and say you should short. It just looks rather tired. We have a lot of stocks that just aren't getting volume as they break new highs. So no signs of strength. But at the same time, we're not closing. Uh, a lot of these are not closing below uh, some kind of uh, signal that would say, it was time to pull the ripcord, just that they're kind of getting quiet. So uh, I'll look at uh, rebuying uh, the IYT, but we bought it at about uh, 180 and change. Uh, and, uh, and so we got a nice uh, um, almost 12 point, yeah, about a 12 point run in the IYT. We'll talk about why I picked that particular ETF. Also add a stock. That did absolutely nothing we got out of that but uh you know sometimes you know sometimes that's all you need and of course it as soon as we got out of it yesterday it bounced today but kind of just bounced back you know one or two percent that's about it anyway uh we'll talk about a lot of these uh stocks uh but starting to get the, a little bit of out over the tips of our skis and I think far too many people, oh, yeah, there it is. Hopefully that goes it. Um, and we're only up five. Was that, did that just reset or was, did we just get a hiccup? I'm just showing the S&P up by five now. Uh, 2872, maybe that was correct all the time. Uh, anyway, we'll look at some of the other stocks that pushed to higher highs today and took a look at it. Uh, we'll do a little history, and then we'll get into a lot of charts. I want to start looking at the NASDAQ and see uh, what's going on in it. But uh, eh, kind of a quiet yes day yesterday, and although we had kind of a bounce today, it didn't seem like we got a lot of pin action on it. Uh, volume starting to pick up, uh, starting to see at least uh, the stocks I was looking at selling into every move higher, and that was a pretty good indication. So. Uh, we shall uh, return with some history. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in history, in 1996, in a small wilderness cabin, which I'm thinking about moving into, near Lincoln, Montana, Theodore John Kaczynski is arrested by FBI agents and accused of being the Unabomber, the elusive terrorist blamed for 16 mail bombs that killed three people and injured 23 during an 18-year period. Of course, uh, he was kind of a very interesting dude, but 
the mentally ill tend to go to Berkeley, Missouri, uh, Berkeley, California. Um, always had the nickname of Berserkly. And, of course, you had a handful of these malcontent nitwits. Uh, they would all go and congregate there, uh, all thinking they had some kind of better and higher wisdom than all other people on the planet. He, of course, uh, railed against uh, planes flying over or any kind of technology. He was sure it was getting in his brain, not sure that he wasn't mentally ill. Uh, but at the same time, sometimes you just need people to tell you you got stupid ideas. And uh, eh, I think today one of the problems we had is that we had a lot of John Kaczynski's and we just haven't said, you know what, you got some very stupid ideas, you need to change them before you go down the rabbit hole. Uh, anyway, of course, uh, he said that he would kill a lot more people in 1995 if they didn't, uh, if the newspapers didn't, uh, 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 didn't uh, uh, put his manifesto. I always wanted to have a manifesto. I don't really actually even know where you go to have a manifesto. Where do you, where do you start? Don't even know that. I don't think I got that much to say. Anyway, uh, if they wouldn't uh, uh, actually put the uh, manifesto in the, uh, what is it, New York Times? I think it was. Uh, that he'd continue killing. So they posted it. His brother saw it uh, and instantly knew it was the same nitwit stuff that uh, he was uh, putting out in Berkeley back in the late 60s. Probably did a little bit too much acid. But, uh, well, they showed up. He had all his bomb-making material, his typewriter that he typed all of the uh, letters on. And, of course, uh, he would go down uh, into town from being out in the middle of nowhere and shaking his fist as airplanes would fly over, as neighbors would say. Uh, but uh, that was about it. He was just kind of a nut. But uh, uh, don't get me started. <laughs> just people with bad ideas should be told before they get too far down the line. Anyway, uh, what else do we have going on? Well, let's go ahead and look at some charts and get started on that. Uh, again, um, we'll take a look at some. When we look at the S&P uh, 500, uh, we're just getting back up into this level. But what I wanted to show you is that uh, is the energy on the way down continues to be just a hair, not Horrible, but on the S and P 500, uh, much sign more significant, and it's been one of these things where it's been rare. And the question is, are you wanting to bet that it goes to 2941, uh, that September 21st high, or that we have to pull back a bit and recharge before we get back up there? What I don't like was the last three days of declining volume that we really, as we've gapped up, haven't had a real sign of strength uh, since some turnarounds. And I think we get to these levels and we just kind of whiff. And uh, I think that's what we're doing now. No sign goes short, but at the same time, thinking that we probably have a couple of days now that fun buying's over, uh, that could be weak. We'll be back in a minute. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the Taz Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at Taz has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the Taz Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the Taz Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the Taz Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Taz Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And got our first request to uh, take a look at uh, that. Um, uh, oh, at the NASDAQ. Now that we looked at the S&P, um, same kind of thing, but even worse, NASDAQ has had uh, even lighter volume uh, back off the uh, December 24th low as we go back up into these. Now you got what is developing to be a doji over a couple of fairly decent sized gaps. I'm just thinking you could pull back. It's not going to be horrible. You can pull back 100 points maybe 140 points, maybe back to 7,800 on the NASDAQ composite. Um, when we uh, look at uh, what we were talking about in the first segment and why we bought the uh, IYT, which was uh, the uh, transports, uh, was that it was the most oversold. And, of course, we've talked about this for a while, but it is the uh, – let's do this. Let's do a little shorter term one. So you can see it a little bit better. Uh, there it is. Let's do there. Uh, this is the IYT. Uh, but we bought it off the bottom um, as in uh, the uh, sector oscillators that I developed. Uh, thanks again uh, to Basil um, for uh, keeping a close eye on these uh, as I continue to develop it. It's probably the absolute best signal I've ever found for buying lows. Uh, st uh, stocks seem to be uh, able to uh, be overbought for a very long time. Uh, but at the same time, um, eh, fear pretty much puts a low in fairly quickly. Um, now, what they will tell you is when every single stock is above its nine-day moving average or medium-term moving average or long-term moving average, and I've got all three that I have set up here. But generally what you want to do is buy when all three uh, are at the uh, rock bottom and uh, sell when all three are at the absolute top. Uh, and uh, getting a little bit of a pullback on the top, so I went ahead and took the cash today. It was also the biggest screamer. Uh, for all the stocks uh, in the, uh, well, in the 26 uh, sectors that I look at. Uh, but, uh, eh, what can you say? It's just, uh, 
uh, one of the things that I look at, and of course, um, this is just, if you, it's kind of a wisdom of crowd things, which is uh, if you wanted to see uh, how many stocks were above or below the nine day moving average or the three by three displaced moving average, or in this case, a nine day moving average, uh, uh, a five by, uh, five by seven uh, displaced moving average and a 25 by five displaced moving average, uh, which is uh, taking the average of uh, generally the last five days and putting them uh, like seven days ahead or taking the last three days and putting them three days ahead. And that gives you kind of a slope uh, to figure out whether a uh, ballistic slope to see whether or not uh, the trend is continuing. It's kind of way, kind of like putting a line on it, but I like it a lot better. I'm not a big fan of drawing lines on, on charts because there's too much of a Rorschach test in it. Uh, I violently uh, try to not put lines on charts that are uh, drawn by anything other than a calculation that I can test over time. Um, but uh, that's kind of it now. This was from last night, but my guess is that we're going to see at least a pullback uh, to the uh, resistance level, which just went through right like butter. Uh, but uh, these big bars here uh, tend to be the support levels on the way back down uh, in a market and the resistance levels in a market that are trending higher and lower. Uh, but when you get to these tops, you're pretty close to getting some kind of blow off top and when you're down at the bottom uh, you get the exhaustion move uh, I've been talking about gold uh, and whether or not you want to be looking at that sector and I'm not ready to pull the trigger on it but I do uh, think that uh, when you look at the GDX in these as I'm showing now uh, that you are getting it fairly close to these what I would love to see is just a little bit more destruction uh, in this, uh, let's zoom in here a little bit so you can see you got these close, but the long term and uh, medium and short terms all didn't go hit the lows quite yet. Generally, when they all hit the lows, you got about three or four days, and then you're going to come off the bottom like you did in the IYT. Um, when you actually look at this and go back, um, the one you really want to look at, in fact, we'll pull it back here, uh, is this one in January when. The gold miners hit the low. And that's really when you start seeing uh, when all of these kind of get down here to these lows. 25 day never did uh, on this in the long term. Uh, but once you start seeing all these crosses, uh, you pretty much are uh, at the point where the market, at least in that sector, is washed out. So kind of a uh, kind of an MRI in sectors. We're going to look at some more charts. Uh, I think I already have an email. Oh, Basil's got a uh, webinar tonight at 5-2, so make sure and hang on to that. Uh, Boeing, hi, Danny in Sarasota. Uh, Boeing, when to buy? Well, I think you had to buy back at 370. I don't know if there is a buy in here. As I said, I'd probably be looking at selling. I think we said that yesterday. If it could get 400 or 405, you may get a bounce in this thing, but my guess is it's going to go sideways for a while. Um, somewhere between, it's actually a fairly large trading range from about 365 back up to about 400. I think it's going to need to consolidate for a while. So I'm not a big fan of going whole hog back into Boeing. Now, if we get a trade deal, this thing's probably going to spike, but that may actually sell the, uh, that may be uh, the point where you would actually want to go short this thing. I suspect that we're going to get that trade deal, and that is where that the market probably within a few days is probably going to hit some kind of unattainable high and then pull back. Uh, March 25th, Polar. I don't know what you have. Okay. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, let's go ahead and start looking at that. Not a fan of buying Boeing here. I mean, I think the trade was to buy it when everybody was screaming and crying. In fact, the, the old hog uh, traders in the Kansas City pits used to have a saying, and that was uh, 
Sell them while they're yelling. Buy them while they're crying. Well, I think you can only buy Boeing when everybody's crying. But uh, eh, probably going to trade sideways for a while now. I think there are much better fish in the sea than Boeing, although it will probably spike if we get some kind of trade deal. Uh, let's go ahead and start looking at the NASDAQ today. I don't have a, a lot of stocks I want to actually show, uh, but we'll go through them. American Airlines Group. Again, these things are kind of, well, we're kind of running out of time. Uh, some of these airlines kind of getting into a uh, triangle pattern that's getting tighter and tighter uh, with uh, lower highs and higher lows. Get back in. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. We're going to go through as many of these big names in the NASDAQ 100 as we can today and see what's going on and see if we can get anything. But there hadn't been a lot of signals out here. Uh, Apple. Uh, as we look at this, it's kind of getting close to retesting its recent high. That's when it spiked on the 22nd of uh, March with uh, 42 plus million shares. Today, getting into that with about uh, a little less than 16 million so far today, there's just not much. Uh, had some other questions in the emails. Let's get back to that. Uh, and uh, that was about. Um, where would you short? And that is 
a close back below either a nine day moving average or a three by three uh, displaced moving average. But that is probably where you're going to see at least some mild uh, destruction. Right now, the only thing we have is some very weak moves into higher volume. So we could go higher. Like I said, I don't see that signal quite yet. Uh, what I do continue, uh, continue to see, though, are stocks uh, like Adobe Systems. Uh, and, and, you know, you just have almost nothing out here. Three million shares on the first, uh, 1.9 million shares yesterday. Today, you got about 1.3 million shares. I mean, these things just are, talk about uh, whiffing like an old man that's gone up uh, several flights of stairs just out of breath. These things are just, there's just not a whole lot to them, which is the issue. Analog devices, uh, to, 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 which is ADI. Hmm. Uh, what else do we have? Yeah, let's get in here. Okay. Analog devices uh, testing its March 21st high that had uh, 4.6 million shares uh, with, uh, to, 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 what do we have, 1.6 uh, million shares so far. So again, just back up into these things, but again, no reversals yet, but you want to be nervous on these. Automatic uh, data processing ADP hanging out the last three days, the last two days, Zippo for volume. Uh, Autodesk, another one kind of bouncing around at the highs. I don't think you can make a great deal out of it. Align Technologies. Eh, just, uh, da, 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 come on. Um, just a slow move up, but the last seven days in a row have been, each day has been lighter volume than the last. That's not a uh, generally a good sign uh, in the markets for that. Uh, let's go ahead to uh, ALX, uh, and which is Alexian Pharmaceuticals, retesting its September 28th high. That was 140.77. It had 3 million shares. Yesterday, you had 1.5 million shares. Today, you got, you're good to get 600,000. Applied materials finally uh, back and above the $40 level that we've seen for a while. Uh, okay. What do we have? Your last big spike was on the 21st in applied materials. That was 13.2 million shares. Today, 9.6 million shares so far. So those are the SMHs. Let's take a quick view on those. We go through these. Um, you've got the semiconductors going above uh, the 21st that had 9.3 million shares, got 6.5 million shares. So certainly it's going to be higher but no sign of strength. And that's where you get slapped around a lot of times. Amgen, uh, back up to its resistance level. It has been a resistance level since the 29th of January. Um, you know, you came down on that day with 8 million shares up today with just 1.1 million shares so far. Amazon been baiting, uh, beating against uh, this uh, one, uh, 1,784, 1,788, December 3rd, highs of last year. We're kind of into that. Now, those about 6 million shares, you got about 2.9 million shares so far today in Amazon. That's why I'm thinking that maybe we're ready to pull back a little bit. Just a, a lot of the volume very light. Uh, let's see what else we have. ATVI, Activision Blizzard is going sideways. Avago Technologies, um, again, just the last three days out here, the, actually, since it's nice gap higher on the 15th of March, uh, this thing has just struggled to get any kind of volume. Uh, a couple days ago, 2.6 million shares. Yesterday, 2.3 million shares. So far, 1.3 million shares. So, again, just a lot of nothing, very light and variable, and would set up kind of one of those moves where you go, okay, we had the fund buying, we had the IPO, 
now we're probably a little bit ahead of the game. Uh, okay, Baidu. Now this one hasn't had a lot, but been bouncing around the 175 level. You're back into that. Got to 176.93 today. Uh, that one's got 2.7 million shares. Uh, actually, one of the better looking ones, but running into candles on the way down from December that had 4 million plus shares. Of course, uh, BIIB, which is BioDeck, uh, had a problem with its drug getting recalled. Not a whole lot going on other than it made that 216.12 low that probably is going to get retested. That's the March 25th low. So you got to kind of watch that. Bookings.com uh, actually blew up on earnings last time. It's trying to get back in here. Ideally, uh, 1825 is the ticket uh, for uh, uh, reshorting this on the bounce. I don't know if you're going to get that if we do start pulling back now. Uh, to, to, to what is uh, BMRN? Biomarin Pharmaceuticals. Eh, not a lot in that one. Let's see what else we have. Um, Citigroup. Now, not a lot of energy. You were down on the 20th of March with 17.5 million shares. Yesterday, you had 9.9 .9 million shares. Today, you're still under 8 million shares with, eh, what are we going to say, an hour and a half left to go? So you're certainly not going to walk into these things with vastly higher volumes. Uh, let's see what we have here. Cadence Design System, which has been a little rocket back since $40.31, has given no signal. This one uh, just really hasn't stopped, still hasn't stopped, still hasn't given a signal that it's ready to sell off, although uh, that one would have a fairly decent pullback to about $53. Bucks. Cell Gene, and another one that's uh, banging at previous highs. This one's going up against the $95.30 high of August 31st. Of last year, we've gotten up here, wanted about five million share, uh, yeah, about five million shares. He gapped up, couldn't hold it. He got a ton of volume sitting in cell gene. That's C L C E L G. We'll be back in a minute. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. So uh, anyway, got a uh, question here about Alibaba. And uh, eh, well, now we're just up four points on the S&P cash. But yeah, yeah. Uh, question about whether or not this would be a buy. I think the risk reward in this comes in about 160. Uh, that's where this thing gapped up and had the last big day of volume. Um, that's probably where it's at. Um, it's going to have to make a new pattern. It's been doing nothing really but going sideways since the 11th. And I can't get a good handle on whether that's distribution uh, or uh, accumulation. My thought, though, is it's uh, probably a little bit of distribution. Uh, what else do we have? CERN. Um, again, contracting triangle there. And again, you generally bust out of that with some level of uh, movement that you can't tell what's going on. Let's see, what else do we have? Okay. Uh, Charter Communications. Um, certainly looks like this wants to come back and fill about half the gap. That would take you back to about 300 bucks. And I'm not exactly sure why that would be, but if you just look at the chart, you really need to, well, you just so many times, come back and hit at least halfway into that gap before you go higher. So you'd want to look at that. Da -da -da. Oh, okay. Uh, bulls are holding by one finger now. Uh, Costco wholesale uh, banging against the highs. This had a 2.8 million share high September 11th. Uh, $244.59, got to $244.41 a couple of days ago, uh, but with just 2 million shares, so about a million shares light. Cisco uh, has been doing fairly well, mostly uh, that uh, U.S. companies can't buy anything but uh, without uh, being uh, complicit in Chinese collusion. Uh, but zero sign on this one other than a light volume in a doji uh, setting up today. CSX uh, tested its previous high. That's the August 28th high, $76. Yeah, $76.02 uh, $76 with uh, 3.6 million shares. As we go past the last three days, you had 4.4 million shares, 3.6 million shares. As you went above, 77.15, and then today pulled right back in. And that's why I'm saying you're not really getting signals that say short. You're getting signals that say top. And that means that maybe you can buy them on the retrace. Um, maybe there's some out here that are screaming shorts, but for the most part, fairly tough. Um, again, you need some kind of signal. And the one I like the best for these stocks that have trended higher is a close below. Uh, the nine-day moving average, a close back above it. And then the next close back below it normally is where the damage comes. 
Uh, don't see much in CentOS other than this gap down with a lot of energy on uh, what is CTAS on uh, this 22nd of last month. 1.5 million shares on the way down. Last three days has been 500,000, 400,000. Today, just 231,000 as you can and you finish closing that gap. That one may be the best looking so far of the bunch. If you're thinking it's going to go back and retest the 191, 91 March 25th low. Uh, but uh, again, eh, kind of tough. C Trip, uh, the uh, Chinese company, again, no sign that anything is going to roll over. You would love for this to come back to where this double gap is at about 37 bucks. Um, the big thing is this is the last two or three days with no volume as you've pushed higher, which is a good sign that you're at least going to get some level of retrace. Uh, what else do we have out of here? Okay, Dish Networks. What do we have? Um, certainly going to get back into this November 7th high and also the gap down from October 22nd. Uh, that The gap down had 2.6 million shares. You spiked it November 7th with 5.5 million shares. You came back into it again uh, in the 4th of uh, March with 4.4 million shares. Today you got 1.2 million shares as you went back into 33.74. So just telling you that there, you know, you don't really have any signals to say it's all over, but you do have a lot of signals out here that are saying that, man, it's going to be tough to see a lot more. Electronic Arts, again, uh, lower highs, higher lows so far. eBay, what do we have in that? Uh, Well, you've pulled back up into this spike, which was the March 1st spike, 17 million shares. Last three days, 6.6 .6 million shares. Yesterday, 7.4 million shares. But today, 4.2 million shares. And we've got, what, an hour and 12 minutes left. So certainly not going to see any kind of signs of strength there. Uh, let's take a quick look at Expedia. Yeah, I didn't see much in that. Uh... Let's see if we got anything in it here. I can turn the gap down. The gaps are all closed, it looks like. Uh, a little gappy little sucker, but again, these things are all making triangles uh, in that. Fast, just fast and all. Uh, let's see about this. Again, no sign out. This is actually a good sign for industry because they make uh, and sell nuts and bolts. Uh, to just about everywhere uh, all over the place. Uh, and certainly no sign there other than the fact the last couple of days, no more juice and a little bit of a reversal signal starting now. And if I'm actually looking correctly here, uh, we're at four now on the S&P cash. Dow's up 11, NASDAQ's up 39, uh, and uh, Russell's up eight, actually. And kind of the strongest one of the day, a little stronger than the NASDAQ, which always makes you think that maybe there's a hint that that trade deal isn't moving along as fast as most people are looking for. A uh, question about uh, Micron and what's going on in it. Let's go back to a little smaller one uh, on the thing. Well, you uh, started back down. Let's go a little bit farther back here. Um, this $41 area had been resistance. You kind of went through it with lighter volume on February 21th, uh, 25th. Pulled all the way back down to 36.57. Uh, spiked it on earnings and then instantly gave it up back on the 21st. Uh, pulled back and now you've gapped above it today with 32 million shares. But you may not be able to hold that high at 44 bucks yet again i think it's telling you where resistance and the supply line actually come in off that 65 dollars high in micron we'll be back in a minute 
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Micron, as we said, was up there. Um, and it's got, you know, better volume than yesterday, but you've got three gaps now. And the question is whether or not you get into a three-gap play, which should take you right back down to about 39 bucks. So you've got to keep a look at that. Haven't looked at Google on the show for a while, so let's take a quick look at that one. Um, again, these are the ones where you start looking and saying, okay, uh, any close below that uh, three by three or nine day moving average uh, would be interesting. Uh, I man, these uh, big uh, Google and Facebook stocks have just got me worried to no end because of uh, uh, especially the Europeans eh, catching them with their hands in the cookie jar just far too many times. Uh, Hasbro again, uh, the same kind of thing. You actually did have a slightly lower low on light volume on February 28th, so you could have seen the buy. But generally, these toy companies aren't great buys until the end of the summer. Uh, what else do we have here? HSIC, IDA, that's IDEX, uh, Illumina. Again, just been in the trading range out here, busting around this uh, 322 level for a second time. You had 1.1 million shares last time. Uh, that was the uh, March 1st high. Uh, 
got into it with 414,000 shares. So again, sometimes volume's just a little bit light. Sometimes it's a whole lot light. And that's what you've got now, plus an Illumina, just not much energy off that March 8th low. Back up to retest this top, top one more. And maybe, yeah, you got a triple top out here at around 320. Always sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. Uh, yeah, time for a breather, I think, in the market. We'll be back in a minute. Oh, we'll be back tomorrow.